<laughs> and she is sheepishly going, he's on to me. It was, it was real easy to spot, you know. Because when I said, okay, we have homework, and I looked around the room, and she's the only one going. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> as best as I can tell, and I will spend the classes trying to prove this, that there is only one subject. It is not the revelation of Christ, though. It's not suffering in general. It is a very specific, very specific suffering. Okay. And um, uh, so I wrote down some things that what First Peter is not. It is not the manifestation of the Lamb in daily things. Okay. <clears throat> it is not his or our death on the cross with Christ. Uh, it is not generically Christ's life in us. I know, because that's the, all the things that we've been saying, you know, this is what it is. And um, uh, it is not being with him uh, or... Let's see. It is us being with him in a specific way, though. Uh, and that way is very specific. It's not really general. It's not really just as things come your way. It pertains to a specific way of being with him. And that way will involve circumstances and it will involve people. But it is not just um, uh, going through something. It's not going through trials. It's not just about going through trials. And, um, and Jan hit the nail on the head both times that you've got up here. It really deals a lot with suffering, but it is only one kind of suffering. And that one kind is his main I mean, I would say his emphasis, his emphasis. So, um, so I want to start trying to give you, first of all, some avenues of understanding Peter, okay? And understanding First Peter. <clears throat> These were things that I didn't know about. I just kept at it and kept at it because I didn't understand it all. I knew, I, I knew all of the general things that I should say that this is, you know what I mean? But the more I dug in, the more I realized this isn't that, this isn't that. I mean, one place he would say something, I'd go, this isn't that. And then over here, another place, and I'd go, no, this isn't, this isn't all the things I always call up and say this has got to be what it's about. Because we're not, we're not, um, being taught by Paul. We're being taught by Peter. And so uh, there are two main avenues for understanding his methods, and I'm, I'm going to give you these tonight. We're not going to get into the full meaning of it yet. What I want to give you is the two main avenues for understanding First Peter, and if you have them between now and maybe next time when I share, you've you might have latched on to what the real deal is. <clears throat> okay, so the two things are cycles and definitions. And, and let me say this, um, I, will, um, I will develop even whatever I say tonight, I will develop further, <clears throat> probably the next class if I don't get to it tonight. So uh, these are tools. Cycles and definition. So let me let me go ahead and get this thing out of here and show you what I mean. Okay, so <clears throat> Mallory was on to this a couple of weeks back and she came to me after class and said, it seems to me that he teaches in, in, that it's cyclical. 
And I said, hmm, yeah, <laughs> that's what I did, wasn't it? Shh, <laughs> don't spill the beans yet. <clears throat> but let me, let me try to draw you a, a chart somewhat of the way this goes. So his theme, I'm, I haven't fully told you the theme yet, the one thing, but that thing he shares in cycles, all right? So let's just say that he starts out over here and he has this little cycle, okay? And that looks like a circle or something, but I'm kind of making a circle that's angled, okay? That's the idea behind it. And then he will have another one that comes up and I never, I never fully drew this out and usually it'll have a little more information but it will be uh, re it will be affirming the cycle that went before particularly as you get into the book okay and then he'll have one that's like it crosses over into that one and crosses over into this one. Now, if you'll notice the way that I did it is that that one's bigger or at least more full. It's a larger cycle. And it's bleeding over into this one and it's bleeding over into that one. So, so, so what that means is, is that this one, the first one is giving you a, a small picture without a lot of clarity, okay? In fact, probably the first bunch of them are giving you pieces and, and developing it as you go. Now that's nothing like Paul who, you know, he just shoots straight down and you just keep going. But he's literally developing his case and you'll never, like Paul, you can, you can pick up, okay, the book, the book of Galatians is about, you know, not being under the law and da-da-da-da and that's, that sort of thing. But with Peter, you really sort of got to know the whole book before you fully get his, his picture, okay, which is why it took me a long time, folks. I spent hours and hours and days and weeks and late at night trying to figure this thing out because I knew that it was different. And I knew that his way was definitely different than Paul's. Okay, so then there's a little overlap here, and then it'll, there'll be a few more littler ones going along. <clears throat> um, and then he will hit you with a really big one. A really big one. And that really big one will have all, a lot of this right here. It'll, in some cases, really have it all really well spelled out, okay? So then, he'll go along again, and he'll have some different sizes, same subject, but, but let's say that this first one here, let's say that it has, I'm just gonna say it has two elements of the cycle, okay? This next one might have three elements of the cycle, and this one here might also have three, but it's, it's touching these others that might have two, okay? Uh, can y'all see without me getting in the way? Okay, but then you, you can get over here and, um, and I would say that it can be basically seen in a cycle or a word that I will be using a lot, a pattern, the pattern. The pattern will have four main, now this one may only have two, this cycle, and this one may only have three, but the main ones, the big ones, and there's, uh, there's probably, gosh, let's, I, I don't really, I haven't counted them. Let's say that there's five really big ones that spell it out fully in themselves, okay. Uh, they, they are more complete and but it's like if you haven't really gone through these and started really seeing what they're saying, and then you'll never understand the overlap if you're, if you're not trying to follow 
that meaning that the cycle or the one subject that he's talking about over and over, then, uh, but when you get to, to the big ones, you will more clearly see it, especially when I tell you what it is. <laughs> You'll really see it when I tell you what it is. <laughs> and it'll be a revelation from God when I tell you what it is. <laughs> anyway, all right, so that's, that's important. If you don't understand the cycles and that he, he shares in cycles and that his basic concepts are cyclical, um, you're just lost because I was for a long time. I was for a long time. All right, so I told you there are two main avenues. One is cycles and the other one is definitions. 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 Peter has a completely different set of definitions than Paul. Okay? All right. So let me, let me just read a few things that I've got here. Uh, first of all, before we get into definitions, let me make sure I covered all this on cyclical. Many of us are used to Paul's linear way of writing, but Peter's very different. You will need to use to get used to his style of cross-referencing. And what I meant by that was really just this constantly um, uh, giving the same thought, sometimes with a little different terminology, sometimes um, in a shorter version of it. But you, you need to get used to that. And uh, I said he has one subject. Uh, in cycles, he presents it over and over again. And then, but he also builds the truth further with each cycle. So, like, I, like the first chapter that seems vague, and don't you feel like there are parts of the book of 1 Peter that are just vague? I mean, that was what was throwing me, because I'm going, but then as the Holy Spirit began to show me, he filled in all of the gaps with cycles, and it was no longer vague, and it was no longer just sort of random language. It was very specifically so specific to what he's trying to communicate, even though you would have to know it almost first. <laughs> but, but, you know, we'll get into that. So the definitions. Um, it will take you a while to understand his definitions, okay? You... Um, you can't listen to the words and use your mind. Because he's, every word, he's, he really is a word man. He really is. More than Paul in the sense of, he, little tiny words that we're so used to, he has attached a meaning to those words. And if you don't catch the meaning of the, the definition that he's using, you're going to start using your own mind or Paul's mind. <laughs> and you're going to go, well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, well, this is a different guy. I mean, this guy did walk with Jesus, you know. <laughs> so um, it's going to take some effort to really want to understand him. And, you know, I'm blessed that you're going to get my experience, because this was tough. I mean it. It's one of the toughest searches I've ever done in my life. Because who could figure out talking like this? And, and then having your own set of definitions that, ha that, will, that will, let me say this, that will explain all of the cycles. But, but like you can read a cycle and go, well, I don't see anything in that. But if you know his definitions, his words, his own personal definitions, you can apply it to the words that are in there and you go, there it is, because that's what I did. I go, there it is. And then so I said, oh, this is a key. I need to learn his definitions. So I started digging in and it was tough. I mean, really, seriously, it was tough. I started digging in and because um, there's so many simple words. And then all of a sudden I began to see it. This guy knows exactly what he's saying. 
This guy's so, so to the point, it's unbelievable. Okay? So, um, you can't listen to the words and use your mind because your mind already has definitions for everything. Yeah, Dennis? Quick question. Uh-huh. Paul was a Hellenistic Jew. Mm-hmm. Uh, his thinking was informed, if you will, uh, through rethinking. Right. Can we identify uh, what one Peter's way? I don't know if that's a... No, I understand the question. I understand the question. Um... Well, what is it they say that, that uh, John's uh, Greek was? His, it was a, yeah, it was, it was, and which is called, there's a name for it, and I can't remember it, <clears throat> but I don't know about Peter, but Peter was a fisherman, <clears throat> so I assume that it was probably, um, is it Cohen Greek? Uh, yeah, okay then that was, that's the simpler version, see. But, and that's the thing that was throwing me with him because so many places, phases throughout the book, it would talk like a fifth grader. <laughs> I mean, that's the feeling I got. I got, I went, you know, buddy, you need to get a little deeper after being with Jesus for three and a half years, you know? Because it just wasn't the, 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 um, I'm looking for Paul again, you know. I'm looking for defin deep definitions and deep experience. Well, he's got it. And, but it's, it's completely different. So, yeah, that's, it's important to realize that it really is a different approach that he's got. Okay, so, um, and then not just words but phrases. His phrases are... I'm just going to go ahead and say this. His phrases are amazing. Even though they look so simple, his phrases are amazing. In this way, three or four words linked together because of the definitions that he pulls in with these specific words that are so simple, when he puts them together, they explode with the truth. They, they, def they declare it. They, they literally are declaring this, whatever this cycle is that we haven't, excuse me, discussed yet. Um, those phrases, and I, see, so I had to go, I mean, I'm going back, in my, back and forth in my iPad. I've got paper around. I've got all this stuff, and I'm going, okay, this, this phrase. Okay, so I write this phrase down, and then I find over here another one, and I go, but it's a different phrase from that. But when you check it out, it's saying the exact same thing. It is. I'm telling you. And Lord willing, we'll see it. I will tell you that this class, I think I've been more nervous over than any class in a long time because of a fear that I wouldn't be able to present this in the impact that hit me. Because because I knew that I'd spent hours and days and weeks and long time leading up to it, and then it comes. And so my heart has been, you know, a little trembling with the thought that, that, because I know that there are other ways to present this that would not impact you the way that it, it should. So you pray, please pray for me, because I want you impacted, because this, this to me is, is really a great, great book. All right. So, um, so we talked about uh, the, uh, I, I want to use the word now on these cycles, these cyclical patterns, patterns, okay, so I want to go with a pattern uh, to start off with, <clears throat> and I, I have three examples for knowing the pattern. So this literally, if you can grasp these, these patterns, or really one pattern, but I'm giving you three different approaches to it. If you can grasp the pattern, you'll start seeing it. The pattern is what 
really started, it, it like opened another door. It like really started opening things up more. I saw the pattern then. It, it wasn't just words and it wasn't just, you know, I saw the pattern of the cycle. The pattern of the cycle. And then there are certain words and certain things you can look for and they will scream the pattern. And the pattern will scream, this is what, this is it, the one, the one thing, the one thing. So, <clears throat> the short version of the pattern would be, <clears throat> uh, first there's suffering and death, and second, resurrection out of it. All right, that sounds pretty simple, but it's not talking about Jesus 2,000 years ago. It's not talking about uh, you going into death with Jesus and being raised. It's not talking about all the things that we've said that it, it, it surely must mean because we know that. Yes. Yes. Uh, first, suffering and death, and second, resurrection out of it. All right. Is that all number one? That's all number one. All right. Now, let's take a minute to think about what that means. Uh, don't apply all that you've learned, because most of it you learned from Paul, to that. Find out what Peter what he, how he sees it, okay? Because you, you won't get it otherwise. You will, you will always default back to, um, yeah, death and resurrection and, and our meanings and all, of, all the ways that we've seen that. So we don't want to do that. All right. Now let's go to the second one. <clears throat> um, and it's the same pattern. I'm just developing it a little more. Okay, do y'all understand what I'm getting? I'm not really giving you two patterns. I'm, I'm trying to give you a short version, then a little more and a little more in the three, okay? So uh, what is the pattern? And this one is getting to the point, though. It starts with a hope. It starts with a hope. Okay, so... Do you think it would be possible for you just to go through First Peter and look for the hope? Okay, because it starts with the hope. All right. Well, you're already half in if you know that, because if the pattern stays true, and again, when I say stays true, the first couple don't. They're, they're just like, like this first one that I gave, death and resurrection, or they're just a simple version of it. So simple you would never guess that's what he's talking about. But if you stay with that and you begin to, in fact, you will probably find it somewhere along the line first before you do up at the front of the book of First Peter. But when you revert back, you'll go, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, again and again and again and again and again. It's like, oh my God, this guy's got one thing to say. Sounds like me. <laughs> you know, it's just, he really does. All right, so starts with a hope. And here's the hope now it's the hope for Jesus to get glory. Okay? It's a hope for Jesus to get glory. It's not a hope to get out of your problems. It's not a hope to get through your trials. It's not a hope that God will show up in you or for you. Not in that sense. It's not. It's all those things that we know, Peter's not talking about that. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, uh, number two... What is the hope causing us? The hope causes willingness to experience suffering and or death. Willingness. Notice that. The hope causes willingness. All right. So, so may I say this? So this cannot be, even though it looks like it is to the the scattered ones and it refers to Babylon and all that stuff. 
Our, our version of Babylon, can I say this? Is not God's version. Our version of what happened to Israel to bring them into captivity, according to Peter now, according to Peter, is not, is not valid. It's not valid. He's going to present over and over this truth in relation to that. But, but it's not all related to that. It's related to everything from husbands and wives and this and that and every ounce of it. Is, he's going to put in that cycle. He's, he's going to show it and he's going to go, this is what I'm talking about. And we'll go, well, I've been trying to be a good wife or something like that. And he'll go, well, stop it. <laughs> this, this is what we're looking for. Isn't that cool? That, I mean, that, that it all could just keep coming with the same truth. All right. So that's, uh, did everybody get number two? Ho hope causes willingness to experience suffering and or death. Okay, so... So what is the willingness for? Okay, we say to experience suffering or death. No, the willingness is so that the, we'll, our hope comes true, and that is that Christ will be glorified. All right, number three. How the suffering is handled. First of all, that's, yes. That's the, that's the third point of the second cycle. Thank you very much. Well, when you have this many cycles up here, but it's all one, you have to remember that. There, it's really not 18 cycles. It's one reality, but not every cycle has all four elements. Or not, we're still in number two. Yeah. Right. So uh, hope causes willingness to experience suffering and death. And that willingness is because we are willing to do it that Christ may get glory. Okay. So now number three, how the suffering is handled. There's the more, more to the sentence, but I want you to write that down. And I want you to think about that that is a huge, major point of first peter how it is handled gives us hope for the hope okay so uh i'll explain that in just a second actually there's only three that i have listed here in this second pattern so uh <clears throat> so let me uh, let me read that again and then let me read the few little things i got underneath it how the suffering is handled gives us hope for the hope. Okay. So remember this suffering and every time it's mentioned in 1 Peter is one specific form of suffering. One specific. It's not a million trials. It's not ten trials. It's one thing. He's trying to communicate one thing. All right. So, um, the way we handle suffering is the hope or assurance of the hope for the Father glorified by His Son as a sacrifice in us. So, the way we handle the suffering is the hope or assurance, okay? So, we're, we have a hope to glorify Jesus. That causes us to suffer. If we, we have another hope now, I hope I handle this right. <laughs> Does that make sense? So there's actually two hopes in there. The first one is I'm willing to go into suffering that Christ may be glorified. The second hope is I hope that I have handled this correctly so that there'll be hope for the hope that it gets glorified. Yes. Um. The way we handle suffering is the hope or assurance of the hope for the Father, for the Father glorified 
by his given son as a sacrifice in us. All right. Now, um, there were many sacrifices, right? I mean, there was a sacrifice for sin, and there's sacrifice, there's all these different sacrifices, trespass offering and all this kind of stuff. This is a specific one-way street reality of sacrifice. It does not include all the things you and I have learned about sacrifice. It, it is only to be kept within the confines of what Peter's trying to communicate. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> all right, so this is the, the th yes? So that last sentence was really long. Mm-hmm. Is it okay if you read it one more time? Sure. Of course. The <laughs> way, <laughs> again, the, <laughs> no, no. The way we handle suffering is the hope or assurance of the hope for the Father glorified. Too fast? Okay. The hope for the Father glorified by his given son as a sacrifice in us. The Father glorified by his given son as a sacrifice in us. You'll have to forgive me. I am so excited about this book that is like, and we keep getting put off, you know what I mean? And not, and it's like, come on, Lord, <laughs> we're ready. All right. Pattern number four, or actually the fourth example of the only pat pattern there is. Is that right? Number three, sorry. Three examples. Pattern number three, and remember these are all just a short version, a medium version, and a little more extended version of the same cycle every, representing every one of them. Wherever you go. I mean, see, I didn't know that. But can you see how it will make this easier? <laughs> Once you start go, understanding that this thing's going to be a bunch of cycles, and they're going to be this, and this isn't complicated. Not really. Okay. Number three. Well, it just got complicated because I touched my iPad and erased it. <laughs> but like the resurrection, I brought it back. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one, hope for Jesus to get glory, right? Simple to the point. But this is glory in a specific way. May I say that this, the, the glory that we're trying to give him is not uh, being in a church service and raising our hands and saying, glory, glory, glory. It's not um, uh, feeding the poor. It's not um, uh, laying down your life and feeding the poor. You see what I'm saying? I mean, all the things that we would want to apply, to, it's not that. The glory that we're shooting for is a very specific glory. Everything in this thing, any word you run across is very specific. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number two, did I say number two yet? No. Causes willingness to experience suffering or death. I know we just did that, but I'm trying to write it in a little simpler form here. Causes willingness to experience suffering or death. Number three, the, the second hope, if you will. The first one has the first hope. Number three, hope to suffer correctly. There's a hope. Because if you don't, you're not going to, you fail the hope to give him glory. Amen? You know. All right. Number three, hope to suffer correctly. And no, number four, 
um, it gives hope that the suffering slash death, it gives hope that the suffering slash death brings forth his nature. Okay, well, those, those wordings are not new to us, you know, but the, what's new to me <clears throat> is the fact that whatever this cycle is that, he's, that these are describing, because this isn't telling you the meat of what the cycle is, this is just telling you what to look for to find the cycle. Whatever the cycle is, whatever that one thing that he's trying to communicate over and over and over is, <clears throat> um, it is I keep falling back on certain words. It is specific. It is um, not it is not anything that you would call just everyday circumstances. Um, but it is, in what we have talked about many times, calling for his nature. But it is calling for his nature because whatever this is, is a big deal to God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. All right. Well, we really, if I start moving here, I, I think that um, I should stop, and here's why. <clears throat> because to get into the next part is going to really, you know, deal with some wider areas. <clears throat> Even though this may sound simple with the patterns and things, it would be more beneficial to you if you could take these little tools that he, he's talking in cycles, and, and he defines his own words. You just have to find where his definitions are. They're in First Peter. You understand what I'm saying? But he doesn't give you the definition right off or always. So that means you have to, be, you have to stay with it. You have to really stay with it and go, okay, he's using this word here. Look, over here he's given the definition of that word as he understands it. And that's, I'll just say, that's specifically true in, in the first, first bunch of the first chapter of the cycle. It's really specifically true there because he hasn't got to the definitions that he gives in, in the, the last part of the first chapter or the chapter two or three or four or wherever. He, he hasn't got to them. So that means that to understand those things, you're going to have to be doing a lot of cross-referencing. You know, this, okay, here's this word. Where can I find it? And, oh, my God, this is, how, this is what's in his mind. That's when it gets exciting. Cause, and that's when, I, that's when I have the guts to say there's one subject here when it looks like a bunch because his definitions will prove it. See? And... And he doesn't jump around a lot. I mean, <laughs> I like that he's, he just sticks with those definitions. He goes, this is how I understand it, and these are the words that say it to me. And, and so he's, he's one of the apostles, and he's teaching it, and he's, this is how he's teaching it to them. And he had, you know, in his day, he had more influence with the Jews than Paul did. So the Jews are, this, this man is majorly influencing their understanding of what we would call Christ and him crucified. Majorly. Okay? But 
Paul is, he'll cover this, and he'll cover that, and this, and what, how does he describe it? Oh, the length and depth and height and breadth of the wisdom and the glory of God. That's Paul talking about what he's seeing and what he shares. And we go, oh, yeah. Peter's going, this, this is, this is what he's after. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. So, 2,000 years later, when we're reading it, we have a lot of reverence to get rid of it. Absolutely, I did. I did. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that um, I will probably, maybe, may, I don't know. See, I'm still, y'all, please pray for me, would you? Because I really want you to enjoy the Lord and to get this. But at some point, I will take the first couple of verses, verse 1 through 3, where he talks about the scattered ones, and, and, and it, you get the feel of what happened to Babylon and the Babylonian captivity and all that. And then you get to the very end, chapter 5, the very end of 5, and he brings that, that fact back in. But we have only looked at the Babylonian captivity in one way. And Peter is bringing in a whole nother way and he's saying their failure is not like what you think it was. And he's trying to bring them in now. Okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we hunger after your son and, and after your heart and we thank you for Peter. We thank you that you gave us another man that can talk to us, that can share with us, that can open his heart. Father, it's amazing what, how he sees your son. And he, even though he followed you for three and a half years, he has not come away with that person being your son. He's come away with the true, true understanding. And Father, he has made his stand on this reality. He's made his stand on that. And Father, I pray, I pray that you'll give me grace and that you'll um, help me to come at this at angles that will literally help them to open it up. I, I, the reason why I gave them, Father, these patterns and things is so they could dig and you could show up and your spirit could show them and it not first be me showing them. So, Father, be with them as they do their homework this week of trying to find the pattern. Trying to find the pattern wherever it would be. So we look to you. We hunger after you. And we trust in you and in your incredible spirit who is sent to teach us Christ. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so your homework is this. Your homework is that you go this week and you try to find the pattern anywhere that you can, okay? If you can find just one version of it, that's fine. I would hope that you don't just find one version and then stop. But, but I, you know, um, I think it would be good if you really, really try to find it. Even if you don't understand what the thing is yet, those four things in the pattern will tell you you're on to it now. You just need to then find out his definitions. That's all. And it'll it'll light up. Okay? Are you ready? Yes.